Alan Starling, a lot of people came down from Hartford, Connecticut, his hometown. He's the USBA champ. Donald Curry is the North American champion. And Sugar Ray Leonard, uh, you know all about this young man. What's your impression, and what do you think of today's fight? Well, again, we have contrast in style, like the uh, Mayweather and uh, Munoz fight. Here we have a boxer, Curry, who stand up. Very good uh, power. And uh, Stalins, who's pretty much an inside fighter, who throws a lot of combinations. Yo, Clancy, Marlon Starling is an explosive puncher and kind of awkward. Yes, Tim, he's a very hyper guy. He's an imaginative guy. Throws punches from all angles, similar to Aaron Pryor. Takes chances, makes it exciting. Marlon Starling, the USBA champion from Hartford. Donald Curry is from Fort Worth, Texas. He is ranked number two in the world by both the WBA and the WBC. That does not sit well with Marlon Starling, who is ranked number six in the world by the WBC, number nine by the WBA. Of course, Milton McCrory, whom you saw two weeks ago on CBS, is currently ranked number one. All three of those boxers and others in the welterweight division awaiting November 9th when our Sugar Ray Leonard will tell the world, is he going to defend? Is he going to retire? And uh, these are the three top prospects in the division. Today you'll see Curry and Starling when we return to Convention Hall in just a moment. We are back live from Atlantic City, New Jersey at the Convention Hall and the bout in cooperation with Caesars Boardwalk Regency Hotel. Here is our ring announcer, Frank Shane. Take pleasure in presenting the Unification Welterweight Championship, the USBA and the North American Boxing Federation, and the officials assigned by the New Jersey State Athletic Commission and the USBA and the NABF. The doctors in attendance at ringside, Chief Physician Dr. Frank Burnett Doggett and Dr. Stanley P. Rogers. The timekeeper, Roy Johnson, counting for the knockdowns at the bell. Referee, Frank Capsino. The judges, Spider Byron from Texas, Harold Letterman from New York, and Lou Bogas from Connecticut. The referee in the ring at this time, Rudy Battle. In the red corner, he's wearing blue trunks trimmed with gold. Undefeated in 24 bouts with 16 KOs from Hartford, Connecticut. He weighed in at 146 and a half pounds. Special introductions for Donald Curry and Marlon Starling, and clearly most of the house will be favoring Marlon Starling because he could get people here quite easily from Hartford, Connecticut. It's a long way from Fort Worth. There is Marlon Starling scoring in this bout as we listen to the referee Rudy Battle will be done by three judges at ringside, one from Connecticut, Lou Bogash, one from Texas, Harlan Bynum, and one from New York, Harold Letterman. Scoring on the 10-point must system, Nine points or fewer to the loser of a round. Clean fight. Good luck to both of you. Shake hands. Rudy Battle, the non-scoring referee, will be in charge in the ring. And we are about set to go with unbeaten Donald Curry and unbeaten Marlon Starling. 21-year-old Curry is 14-0. 24-year-old Marlon Starling is 25-0. And there was some word that Curry had trouble making the weight for this bout. He showed up late for the weigh-in at 8 o'clock this morning and weighed in right at the limit of 147. You know, Tim, that could be a, have a psychological effect on uh, Donald Curry. Uh, just the point of having to struggle to make that weight. Well, if indeed that's what he did, we had no confirmation that that happened, except that he did not appear at 8 o'clock for the official weigh-in, did not weigh in until more than an hour later, right at 147. A warning by referee battle to both boxers to watch their heads inside. Well, there is no film out process. Both men are just going at it in the very first round. 
We saw Marlon Starling flatten Kevin Morgan at 2.06 of the first round to win the USBA crown. Here on CBS, he's had one fight since then, a 10-round decision over Mao De La Rosa. Tim, when fighters go all out like this in the first round, they're usually a little tight, and if a guy gets nailed when he's tight, anything can happen. This is, this is an important round to watch in this fight. No feeling out at all. Both going bombs. Donald Curry won the NABF title with a fourth-round knockout of Bruce Finch, who fought Ray Leonard for the World Championship. In his last outing, Curry went 10 rounds to beat the difficult Adolfo Virouette in July here on CBS. Inside, Tim, you will see that Marlon Stallings is far more effective than the uh, taller Donald Curry. But on the outside, Curry has that good left jab and that good overhand right. He would be more effective. I think it's safe to say we had a disappointing lightweight championship battle. An impressive performance by Roger Mayweather winning the title. A disappointing show by the champion, Ruben Munoz. I can't believe we'll have a disappointing fight here. These two fellows have already set a very aggressive pace. Both of these gentlemen are very impressive fighters, and um, like Gil said, they're tight. So anything can happen at this point. Right hand lead by Curry just grazed the chin of Starling. Starling digging back to the body under a minute to go round one. doing the wrong thing. He's starting to reach now for Curry, and uh, Curry could capitalize on that. <laughs> well, there's a little show by the Magic Man. A move I never saw before. <laughs> I've never seen that. I well, don't want to try it either. <laughs> right, right. He is flamboyant, no question about that. You will hear his supporters call Moochie, Moochie, Moochie. It's a nickname for him. And there are more than 800 of them down here from Hartford, Connecticut. <laughs> seconds of round number one scheduled for 12. <laughs> round number two on the left of your screen is the NABF champion now on the right Donald Curry is circling to the left and now around to the right is Marlon Starling the USBA welterweight champion digging shots to the body and Donald Curry pushing him off comes a mouthpiece as Curry cut Starling with his mouth open and Starling's mouthpiece is out. It wasn't a very hard punch but it was a surprise punch. He just seemed to reach out with it. But when Starling comes in he throws a lot of punches but they're not really that effective because he's throwing punches just whipping them in there. He's not putting his body behind him. Well Curry is reputed to be the bomber of the two. If anybody lands one big punch that can change the fight around it should be Curry. I, what I like about uh, Donald Curry Gill is the fact that he's, he's very patient and uh, he's a real professional. He makes everything count. Marlon Starling has certainly been colorful in the early going here with a couple of footwork maneuvers we haven't seen from anybody else. When you've got your mouthpiece out this early in a round, Ray Leonard, do you consciously try to protect it? Protect well, your mouth? Well, my teeth are costly. I always try to protect my mouth. <laughs> No, but what would Starling be thinking about? We know it's a little more peekaboo in this round. Well, at this point now, by having his mouthpiece knocked out, it's a form of embarrassment. It's like an insult to a fighter. And uh, But the main thing for him to do is to do what he's doing now, continue to work. He has to protect that mouth because one solid punch in the mouth, could rip his teeth could rip his lip right, wide open, and he could lose on a TKO. He's got to get through this round and get that mouthpiece back. But he's staying inside and punching with Curry. You know, this is a good thing with the Curry doing. He goes down. He's too down with uh, Stalin. So he won't have a shot to his body. Well, you're always taught to keep your head lower than the other guy's head inside, no matter what, Ray. That's one of the things that most good trainers teach. To prevent uh, head butts also. Under a minute to go. Round number two, scheduled for 12. Welterweight Championship of North America and the United States combined. These two champions meeting. Ranked number two and six in the world. I'm sure Milton McCrory is looking in with some interest today from Detroit. Ranked number one. And all three and others in the division awaiting November 9th in Ray Leonard's decision. Now I can see why they call Curry the Cobra. He is quick. He's not as flashy as Stalin, but when he makes a move, it's quick. 
1979 national AAU champion and the 80 national Golden Gloves champ on the Olympic trials in 1980. Had over 400 amateur fights since the age of eight. Starling won the national AAUs in 1974 and the Junior Olympics that year. Final seconds, round two. Round number three from Convention Hall, live on CBS Sports Saturday. Donald Curry in yellow trunks, Marlon Starling in blue, and Gil Clancy, uh, what about Starling standing between rounds? His trainer and manager, Max Buckley, has him stand up between rounds. Well, I, don't, I don't like that a bit, Senator. If, it, if it's a 12-round 12, 12 fight and it goes to 12, that means the other guy is sitting down and resting for 11 more minutes than you are. Uh, a wrestling oh, match this. ensuing look here. This. As soon as they got clinched, Starling literally muscled Curry around, but it, this is not two out of three falls, unfortunately, for Starling. Well, we, we said he's flamboyant, Tim. He, he's like, he's in there to win this fight. He, he's not looking for any help from the referee or anybody else, and I guess he thinks Katie bar the door, anything goes. Anyhow, Tim, I also like to have a guy sitting down because I think I can get his attention better and work on him, administer great, great. Vaseline, and look him right in the eye when I'm giving, giving him the instructions. I think that's important. Raymond, have you always uh, sat on a stool between rounds? Well, Tim, I always sit down because I try to get as much rest as I possibly can. Donald Curry, bright yellow trunks, the Cobra from Fort Worth. Marlon Starling from Hartford, Connecticut in blue. Starling has a very orthodox style. You never know what punch he's going to throw because uh, he's here, he's there. Again, he's like uh, Aaron Pra. The best combination for Donald Curry to throw is that left uppercut and that overhand right. And what's going to lead up to that is that left jab. Starling comes in, uh, what I say, he, he makes earmuffs. He takes one, one glove and puts it on each side of his head. I don't particularly like that because that leaves your body open. Curry could be ripping some good left hooks underneath when he raises those hands up like, the way he does. Curry's going to continue to miss with that overhand right because what's happening now, Starling's is starting to time it. You know, it's every time that uh, Curry throws a jab, Starling goes down because he knows the right hand is going to follow that. Starling just let out a couple of bird calls, Tim. I mean, <laughs> who do you think he was trying to call? <laughs> I guess a fellow Starling. I'm not sure. <laughs> Very good, Tim. <laughs> Maybe he brought some <laughs> with him along with the fans. Very good. 24-year-old Marlon Starling has had 11 more professional fights than Donald Curry. Not nearly as many amateur fights. He started a little later. Step out. Step back, please. Step back, please. 107 amateur Great. bouts Great. for Starling. Under 30 seconds to go on the third round. Starling going to the body effectively in the last exchange. Curry, the more patient of the two. Final seconds of the third round. Round number four scheduled for 12. The North American champion, Donald Curry in yellow. Marlon Starling, the USBA champion in blue. Referee Rudy Battle having some difficulty getting them separated. Close fight as we see it so far. Neither fighter able to assert any real dominance. And it is the matchup that we expected. Two outstanding young welterweights. And they're interested in what's going to happen on November 9th, uh, Ray Leonard. Uh, what's this about a about a party? That sounds like you're celebrating something. Well, I'm looking forward to it at the Baltimore Civic Center for two main reasons. No more speculations. I'll make the decision. And also the money that's raised will go towards uh, a, a summer uh, job program. Well, that's a great idea. And, of course, everybody wants to know what you're going to announce that night. We're looking forward to that evening. Tim, if I, if I was Curry, I'd stay with that left jab. He's a little taller than Starling. has a little longer reach. And I don't think he has to be impatient. The way Starling makes those earmuffs, you can just pop that jab right at his forehead, time after time. But I like the way that uh, Curry goes to the body, especially inside. He, he comes around with that, uh, that body shot to the ribs. You know, he threw, just threw it again. Since that uh, Marlon Stalin is starting to talk to Curry, in fact, he's warned uh, earlier about talking. Well, if, 
there's any truth to the fact that Donald Curry had a lot of trouble making the weight, they could po possibly affect his stamina if the fight was into like the 9th, 10th, 11th, or 12th round. Starling scored inside with that last exchange after Curry had landed a couple of good shots. <laughs> there's that. I'm not sure what he calls that. He must have a name for it. The Magic Man Stomp or something. Again, Curry, I see now that you know, he's in a position to throw a left a shot to the kids. Hey, Luke. He knows how the stars is straight up. And there's no protection to his kidneys. Good combination scored by Curry just before the break. Starling looking back to his corner, thinking, feeling the referee was breaking him prematurely. What should I do? Under 30 seconds, fourth round. I'd like to alert our local stations along the line. We'll be going to a station break at the end of this fourth round. Starling and Curry, welterweights. We'll be back after this word from your local station. back live from convention hall on cbs sports saturday tim ryan with sugar ray leonard and gil clancy this is the nabf and usba welterweight championship going 12 rounds if they get that far round five starling the u.s champion blue the north american champ donald curry in yellow by both the WBA and WBC. Starling is ranked number six by the WBC. Number nine by the WBA. Ring Magazine likes him number five. Donald Curry doesn't need to be inside. He can stay on the outside and just, uh, just outbox Starling. But inside, he takes a chance of not only getting butt, but getting caught by some of those uppercuts. Watch Curry inside. He takes that right foot and steps forward and, and in effect becomes a southpaw. He's done it three or four times so far. Very, very cute inside, Curry. Again, a reminder to our local stations, we'll be going once more to a station break at the end of this fifth round. A shot to the body by Curry. There's that uh, stomp by, the Starling stomp, I think we're gonna call that. I'm, I'm not sure what effect it has. Kinda looks like a pony pawing the ground before he's about to get at the hay. If I was in there with Starlings, I would catch him in the air. Right in the middle of the stomp? Yeah, well, he just got caught then. The thing to do is to time it. Great, great. Jump right on him. That business of making him up. She got that left hand, you're supposed to do something with it. He's inviting Curry to punch him. Curry's punching. I hold up right again. Curry should be going to that body. Every time that Stalin put those, uh, two what, what do you call them? Yeah, I call them earmuffs, man. Right? It looks like he's making earmuffs. He should go to the body. The reason a fighter does that is he's trying to invite the other guy to punch. He's too lazy to open up with a jab. I think that's a very bad habit to get in. I used to really give my fighters heck when I do something like that. A little stronger than heck, too. Starling holds victories over Floyd Mayweather, the older brother of Roger, who won the U.S. lightweight title earlier today on CBS Sports Saturday. Also wins over Juan Hidalgo and Babs McCarthy. I think a punch, a right hand by Starling's got through. Curry holding on firmly here. That brings in referee Rudy Battle. Curry's best wins over Curtis Ramsey, Bruce Finch, and Adolfo Virio at some Tim blood from Curry the has, Curry has a cut under his lip that looks like a pretty bad cut from that right hand that Stalling nailed him with. It's a good cut and it's bothering Curry. Final seconds of the fifth round. We'll be back after this word from your local station. Starling, who has opened a cut on the lip of Donald Curry in round number five. And we're underway with round six. Tim Ryan, Gil Clancy, Sugar Ray Leonard, two welterweight champions. Trying to combine the titles and more importantly, looking ahead to a world title shot. 
That's their, there's their uppercut again by Stalin. And it will continue to do damage to the, uh, the, the lip. That, 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 that lip is bothering Curry. He's sticking his tongue out. He's licking his lip. That also could prove dangerous. He better not get hit with that tongue sticking out. It is bothering him, though. Solid right to the ear of Curry from Starling. Well, Curry's making a mistake of getting inside uh, with Starling, which he, ha he doesn't have to. He can box. That's right. He has that good long left jab and has plenty of power. That's all he has to do is step in and out. I don't know why he likes to be inside there with Starling. Starling's the shorter guy and has the advantage inside. And he's a very flamboyant and confident kid. Keep him outside and tame him. That's the thing to do. Starling said before the fight he didn't think Curry was anything special. And he thought that he should be ranked number one, meaning that he thinks he's better than Milk McCrory, too. All of that will be settled once Ray Leonard settles matters on November 9th. That'll be some interesting matchups. A wink from Starling over at our championship, Ray Leonard. He's a piece of work, Marlon Starling. He's very confident now. The magic man, Mucci. Donald Curry, the boxer puncher of the two his nickname the cobra we've seen some of that quick disguised speed from curry this footwork by starling it just absolutely you know that's an hp i really believe that uh, Starling is just trying to uh, upset him frustrate him that's right right that's all part of his act he's very cocky and I thought I was cut. <laughs> there you go. Well, you found another one, man. Well, he, he surpasses me by a long shot. Under a minute to go. You see what Starling did there? That, that was from Willie Pep and Sandy Sadler. He put his, he put his leg behind Curry and he was going to throw him down. I don't believe that. He doesn't need to do this. He has so much talent. Both fighters. But what he's doing, though, he's, he's taking Curry's concentration away from him. Curry should just be like a shoemaker and stick to his last and just keep throwing those punches. But he's watching Starling. Under 30 seconds to go in the sixth round. Starling tried to spin Curry and hit him on the spin, but he missed. Again, Curry should not be that close to, uh, to uh, Marlon Stalin's because of that, uh, well, that injury to his mouth. Stalin made him grab then. We're looking into the corner of Donald Curry. He has a cut on his lower lip. It does not appear to be too bad, but as Gil Clancy has pointed out, it's bothersome. It's the kind of thing the fighter's conscious of. If he was a half an inch lower, a quarter of an inch lower, he probably wouldn't even notice it. Will it become a factor? Well, it will, of course, uh, remain to be seen. We are live from Convention Hall in Atlantic City. Seventh round, scheduled for 12. Marlon Starling has been the showman here through six. The USBA champion, Donald Curry in yellow, the North American champion from Fort Worth. Again, you see Curry kind of licking his lip, conscious of that cut. Starling trying to put a long-range combination together fell short. Beautiful boxing ability by Curry, uh, Tim. He has a lot of talent. A lot of talent. He can move, move in either direction, punch. A lot of talent. And Stalling again, he's the flamboyant guy. He's trying to hustle to win this decision. Neither fighter has intimidated the other. Curry may be a little bit distracted by the unusual style of Starling, but... <laughs> Who wouldn't be? Who wouldn't be? I break, 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 break. Yeah, I am. Let's break. Right. Mm -hmm. Neither fighter has been in with a fighter of this class. They're looking at their best opponents yet in each case. Tim, there aren't too many fighters in the world of this class. When they get together, this is about it. Milton McCrory uh, above them in the rankings. Those are the three that fight fans think uh, will produce the next colorweight champion one way or another. Under a 
minute to go, round yeah, well, seven. You know, I notice now the starters is starting to uh, catch uh, Curry's left jab. So Curry needs to fake it, fake that left jab and come with the lead off right. the feeling that Starling would like to stand and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Curry. Curry uh, wisely has avoided that kind of a confrontation, at least at this point in the fight. Under 30 seconds to go round seven. I can't believe Curry's reaction to that cut, Tim. He's constantly fooling around with it with his tongue. It, it really is on his mind. There it is again. doesn't appear to be the case, but it may extend inside the left. End of round seven. Balance left, three, four, In the corner of Donald Curry, his manager, David Gorman, and his trainer, Paul Rays, along with Joe Barry Intes, attending to that neck on the lip and giving him some encouragement. Very calm corner, and that reflects the personality of the fighter, Curry. Well, Tim, I never heard a guy more calm than Dave uh, Gorman. He says, look, he says, keep him on the outside. Keep him in the center of the ring. He says, we're falling a little behind in the fight. I mean, I, I would never be that calm when I'm talking to a fighter. I say, hey, come on, let's go, you know. Curry needs to keep his hands up. When he comes inside and he backs away, his hands are down, which is a big mistake because Starling throws punches as the fighters move him back. And Starling landed a good left hook, Ray, just under those conditions. Starling trying to keep Curry pinned into the corner. Curry moving well to avoid the worst of that artillery, or the best, depending on your point of view. I would never exchange punches with a fighter like Starling because he's throwing punches and... Uh, he turns into a wild man. I would prefer to tie him up and back away from him. Sugar Ray Leonard, Gil Clancy, Tim Ryan live on CBS Sports Saturday. More boxing tomorrow on a non-football Sunday. We'll have former champion Hilmer Kenty against Roberto Elizondo, two of the top ten lightweights in the world. And also you'll see Mauricio Bravo on Pablo Baez, another pair of welterweights interested in today's proceedings. It's tomorrow, following a special edition of the NFL Today at 12.30 Eastern Time, we'll have boxing following the NFL Today. I don't think Starling is as busy as he could can be inside either, Tim. His hands are free and he just doesn't move them enough. He throws one at a time. Curious on the some good body shots. They could be taking a toll on uh, Bob Starling's. This is See, a... Starling's inside, his hands are free, but he just doesn't seem to punch him. Look at now, both hands are free, he's standing right in front of him, doesn't let him go. That's the time to score points. I think he may have heard you. He looked over here, he's easily distracted. Another uh, wink for... Better, you better stop winking and start fighting. Under a minute to go in this eighth round. The Starling stomp again. Starling stomp. Yeah, I had to give it a label. We're going to apparently see more of it. I haven't seen him throw a punch off it. That was maybe next. Shot. That was a great combination just, just thrown by Bobby Stalin. Heavy punches, Ray. They were very heavy punches. He seems to be getting a little, a lot of respect out of Curry at this particular time. Oh, that's a good geez. point. Yeah, I think that's the first time we've really seen it on the part of either fighter. Right. Watch the elbows of Marlon Stalin because he uses them well. Yes, he does, Ray. Well, he comes from hockey country up in Hartford, you know. I know about elbows. He doesn't need to. He's a good fighter. Final seconds of the eighth round. Curry finishing well with a flurry here in round eight. Number nine, Tim Ryan, Gil Clancy, Sugar Ray Leonard, live from Convention Hall. We have an interesting competitive bout between two champions, the U.S. champion, Blue Marlin Starling, Donald Curry, the NABF champion, Yellow. Close fight as we see it. Scheduled for 12. Scoring by three judges on the 10-point plus system. The referee, Rudy Battle, stepping in, will not figure in the scoring. See how you pick the left jab is. He's doing all day. Curry's 
he's going to have to have more and more. To become more of the box that he really is. You know, Stalin just used those bird calls again. To pull. But I don't understand. He's, he's got to do a little more fighting. It's a very, very close fight. He's acting like he won the entire eight rounds. There's two punches, and he stops. He has to make these flashy flurries. speculation that he had trouble making the weight. He weighed in after the official weigh-in time. Starling at 146 and a half. Two good left hands by Curry. Starling dropping his hands saying no they weren't. Yeah, they he, may, he may drop his hands and say no they weren't but they're scoring points. Exactly. That's what this is all about. Great, 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 great. Left hand scored by Starling. give you a scoring update at the end of this round so stay with us those of you interested in catching up with today's scores under a minute to go round number nine. Oh, good right hand by starling right hand by starling landed as curry misses overhand right and curry curry is acting as if he's been hurt he's respecting starling now for the second time in the fight. Yeah, he seems to be in a little trouble. He's doing the right thing. He's moving away, trying to clear his head. Now's the time when Stalin has to throw those combinations, body and head, but he's chasing the guy without punching. Under 30 seconds to go, an uppercut landed by Starling, and good shot back from the right hand of Curry. Starling gets beautiful position inside, but then a lot of times doesn't move his hands. Too easily distracted. He doesn't concentrate enough in those circumstances. Now let's go to Brent Musburger in New York for an NCAA update. We are back live from Convention Hall in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Marlon Starling in blue, Donald Curry in yellow. A close fight as we see it. Starling perhaps getting the better of the last couple of rounds, and he did appear to hurt Curry, at least momentarily, with one clean shot in round nine. This is the tenth round. Tim Ryan, Sugar Ray Leonard, and Gil Clancy. Again, the referee warned uh, Starling with that elbow use. Elbow and open glove. Lacing with an open glove, Ray. And it disturbs me when a fighter has so much talent and use those illegal tactics. Well, and plus, so we mentioned his lack of concentration, Ray, he's, he's easily distracted. He's not really staying down to business every second of every round. But Tim, I'll tell you, he's acting like a winner now. He really has Donald Curry on the run. Donald's really running around that ring, trying to score points that way. And Starling, if he's not doing anything, at least looks like the aggressor. Well, these guys want me to leave the ring. They got to be a lot uh, better sportsmen. Good point, Ray. And I think that Curry is starting to show signs of getting a little weary. Starling digging to the body, and Curry is definitely now using much more motion and far less punching. To round number 10, scheduled for 12. It will combine the NABF and U.S. titles at 147 pounds. Curry coming in and out. Looking good. Well, this is going to be a tough uh, fight to score, Tim. Uh, for example, a round like this, some judges like guys that move all around the ring and look to score a point here and there, and other judges like the guys that do the pressing and put them together when they get inside. So who do you like? Under a minute remaining in the 10th round, we're going to have another college football update for you quite a day on CBS Sports. What a thriller that Illinois finish was. And Brent Musburger and Ara Parsegian will have more on today's college football action. At this point now, especially in the late rounds, both fights will be more effective if you just both just settle down. Curry landed an overhand right to the arm of Starling that caught him off balance. He was not hurt by that blow, but in his inimitable style, he just kind of casually fell back. I think Curry is stealing this round, Tim. 
He's doing all the moving, styling. He's making a lot of motions, but he's not landing any punches at all. Coming to the end of this 10th round. Close fight as we see it. Curry and Starling. Right hand landed by Starling. Let's go to Brent now in New York. We're back for round number 11 in Gil Clancy. We could hear Mac Buckley admonishing Marlon Starling. Well, he said exactly what we were talking about, Tim. Uh, Starling has got to start to throw five or six punches at a time. He has to stop showboating and start working. That's what it's all about, scoring points. He gets inside, he gets perfect position, and then he doesn't let his hands go. Or he throws one and stops. Well, that's when the Starling can really take advantage of it. He just uh, has very fast hands and uh, scores a lot of points. Another thing he's doing wrong now, he's following Curry around the ring. He's just walking after him. He just walk and from that position, it's tough to get off. He's just following Curry, and he's being picked apart, or at least he was last now. Those of you expecting other programming on CBS at 6 o'clock, uh, we will be joining that, of course. The reason we're running over our normal sports time this afternoon, college football games ran a little long today, so we got started late here in Atlantic City. But you are watching round 11 of a scheduled 12-round welterweight championship. The North American champion is Donald Curry in yellow and the U.S. champion Marlon Starling in blue. With the way um, Curry is moving around the ring, in a situation like this, what I would do, throw a lead off right. Because again, Starling is starting to follow uh, Donald Curry around the ring. He's chasing him. He's right. not trying to cut the ring off. He can throw that right hand, Ray, right to the side, right to the elbow, bring Curry in front of him, and then get him into an exchange. That's, That's what it. he has to do to trap him. And he would definitely be in good position to do whatever he wants to do. Curry, as we saw, took an early lead, but a lot of close rounds. Starling, we gave seven, eight, and nine to on our unofficial card, but uh, it's going to be a difficult fight to decide. One round to go after this one. Two hard punchers who have been unable to hurt each other, mainly because of this kind of activity. Can you see the way that Starling reaches? He reaches for Curry. Curry has an opportunity, and every opportunity in the book, to throw something back, especially a right hand. He has to get some points from the judges for aggressiveness, though. Uh, to Don to Donald Curry is really moving around that ring now. Again, he's, uh, Curry's in very good position to throw the overhand right. Starling just missed with his overhand right. Starling is literally chasing Curry, but as you fellas point out, not effectively cutting the ring off. Under 30 seconds to go, round number 11. Here's an example. Here's an example where Starling's inside again, has his both hands free. He has to move. He has to put on his show. That's what the judges are looking for. Separate one guy from the other. Very difficult when you don't punch. Look at the position he has now to move those hands. Coming to the end of this 11th round, the judges are Lou Bogash from Connecticut, Arlen Bynum from Texas, Harold Letterman from New York. They'll do the scoring. Keep it clean. All right, please, come on. Hold it. That ends round number 11. Let's go to Marlon Starling's corner where you see his manager and trainer, Mac Buckley, a veteran of the amateur boxing this wars and an attorney in Hartford. This is it. This is all the marks right here. You got him, he's tired, and you're, catch you're catching him with everything you put in there, but you've got to throw more punches. Okay, last round. Last round. Punch moving it. Punch moving it. They're telling him to go to you now. Right? Last round, we touched gloves in the center. In the Donald Curry quarter. You know what I'm telling you? Don't you nail it some hard shots as well as right. You hear me? This is it. This is it. This is it, Don. Come on, you need to put it together. Can't do it on your back. Dave Gorman. The trainer Paul Ray is telling Curry to put some more punches together. So both corners want their fighters to finish well. This is, by our viewpoint, a very close fight between two of the top three welterweights in the world rankings. And this is the final round. 11 knockouts in 14 fights for Curry. 16 and 25 for Starling, but they're on their feet against each other in the final round, the 12th. This fight could very well go into a draw because I have, the way I have it, 6'5", Starling's leading. Slight edge. 
Very close fight, Ray, and, and Starling is working now the way he could have worked in all, a lot of those earlier rounds when he gets that good position inside. But Curry's banging right back with him now. And it was Starling that looked to tie him up and grab instead of punching with him that time. They stop. They punch and they sit there. At this point, now they should be throwing all the punches they can. This one, this one shows uh, championship maturity. That's right. This is where they separate the men from the boys. This is the round. Both fighters are just trying to land one big punch. And what they could be doing, especially inside here, throwing, uh, th making points, by throwing combinations. Curry with a good curry there. He's been a little busier. By far. Star Starling gets the position and Curry lands the punches. Starling digs an uppercut inside. But Curry again with another flurry. Starling in his good little days. Overhand right by Donald Curry landed. Clean. Under a minute to go, a close fight that could well be decided in this final minute. They're both showing signs of fatigue, Curry and Starling. Curry lands a combination. Starling's letting the fight get away from him. as much and Curry's taking control now. Well this fight has had an ebb and flow regardless of the outcome. I would expect you will see both these fighters still figuring prominently in the welterweight division. Quite a match up here today and it'll be a very difficult fight to call. Final seconds of the 12th round. Give me my gloves Tim. Who do you at home think won this one? Good fight. That's it. Starling gets the hands up quickly, gets his supporters on their feet, but the judges, of course, will be rendering the decision. So we'll be back with the decision here in Atlantic City. Right now, let's join Brent Musburger for a sports news update from our studios in New York. We are back here in Atlantic City, and with the decision, here's ring announcer Frank Shane. decision. Judge Lou Bogash votes 113 points Curry, 117 points Starling. We have a split decision. Harlan Spider Bynum votes 116 for Curry, 112 for Starling. for Curry, 112 for Starling, the winner and There it is, a split champion. decision. Donald Curry getting the votes of the judge from Texas and the one from New York. Starling getting the votes of the judge from his state of Connecticut. And it is a split decision in favor of Donald Curry, who now holds both the North American and the U.S. titles. He is currently ranked two in the world. And Starling, of course, will still figure very, very heavily in the world title picture along with number one rank, Milton McCrory. And we will all find out November 9th what our sure Ray Leonard is going to do about those two titles he holds WBC and WBA and there is Donald Curry the winner today in a very grueling fight and uh, remember we'll have more boxing tomorrow on CBS Sports Sunday featuring the former WBA lightweight champ Hilmer Kenny against highly ranked Roberto Elizondo for Gil Clancy and Sugar Ray Leonard so long from Convention Hall in Atlantic City we return you now to Brent Musburger in New York